my name is Anne Katrin Grösser. And the motivation that got me working on the paper is Ignorance, Bliss, Rational Inattention and Optimal Pricing is that in recent years our access to information has changed. Due to new technologies like the internet, smartphones and so on, there's now a huge amount of information that's available um, out there. And one could argue that nowadays it is not the main challenge anymore to gather enough information, but the bottleneck is rather the limited attention the limited capacity of a decision maker to pay attention to all of this information. So this raises new questions and has led to um, new branches of literature, for example the literature on rational inattention, who asks exactly this question, well how should a decision maker who has only a limited capacity to process information, how should he divide his attention? It also raises new questions or changes the perspective of well-established topics um, for example, information regulation, thinking about, well, should you actually um, provide a lot of information to a consumer, or may there be a flip side to it? So what I do in this paper, I'm interested in two questions. First of all, I want to understand how the consumer's information affects optimal pricing, to then ask, well, what is the consumer optimal information structure? I look at this in a very simple seller-consumer situation, where um, the seller has zero marginal costs and the consumer has a certain valuation for the product. The seller only knows the prior distribution of the consumer. So you could ask, well, how does consumer's information affect optimal pricing or the pricing decision of the seller? Well, think about the two extremes. If you think about the consumer not having any information about his valuation, he will form an expectation of his valuation for the object and that's his willingness to pay. The optimal decision or pricing strategy for the seller is to charge exactly this price, you will extract all surplus, and this is a very bad situation for the consumer. The other extreme, however, is the case where the consumer has private information, is privately informed about his true valuation for the object. In this case, we are in a standard monopoly pricing situation where the seller charges the revenue maximizing monopoly price, there's some deadway loss, and the gains from trade, they are split between the consumer and the seller. So here the consumer is way better off. So you could think that there's a monotone um, result here that if the consumer has more information, he can extract more information rents and hence is better off. So what I show in the paper is that the situation is a little bit more sub subtle. Um, the information of the consumer does affect his value estimate for the object and his willingness to pay, but it also affects the effective demand function of the seller and hence his pricing decision. So in the paper, I can fully characterize the consumer optimal information structure and I show that it is characterized by three properties. The first one is that the consumer optimal information structure is monotone partitional. So the consumer um, partitions his interval of possible valuations into sub-intervals and just learns in which range his true valuation falls. The second property is that trade is efficient, so all gains from trade are realized here and trade occurs with probability 1. And the final property is what I call seller indifference. So the consumer optimal information structure induces a demand function for the seller that is an equal revenue curve. So for any possible price that the seller may want to charge, he obtains the same revenue. Um, I then look at the unconstrained case, so where the consumer faces no information constraints or costs, so he could learn his true valuation at no cost, and I show that even in this case, it is not optimal for the consumer to become fully informed, but he would benefit from committing to ignore some information. If he ignores information that would separate low valuations, he offers the seller a higher probability of trade for an intermediate price here. Um, there are additional gains from trade and in return for, for those additional gains from trade, the seller offers better terms of trade and meaning a reduced price. So the positive effects um, reverberate back to the consumer. And you can now apply this, for example, to talk about a rationally inattentive consumer where the results would tell you um, the optimal heuristics that a rationally inattentive consumer should use.